So this morning's breakfast session is looking at post lockdown, whether we still need offices. And this is, I was speaking, um, I was speaking to some of our members, and this is a universal question that's being discussed at the moment. Um, I was on a panel at the UK um, Tech Cluster Group, um, and there were businesses from across the UK, big and small, all talking about this topic. So we thought it'd be something really interesting to, um, to discuss with our members. And I think through lockdown, there's been huge periods of um, innovation that have sort of been forced on businesses. And now as that dust is settling, we're starting to look at how we can lock in some of the successes of remote working and to perhaps save on some of the costly expenses of office space. And we spoke with um, Ben, who I'll introduce in a moment, um, Ben Collier, who is the co-founder of Acasta, and they've just gone through this process. So uh, I would really love now to welcome Ben um, and to sort of share some of his experience of navigating um, life post post lockdown. So um, Ben, can I get you to um, introduce yourself maybe and just say a little bit about um, Acasta? Yeah, of course. Um, it's lovely to meet you all. Um, so my name is Ben Collier. I'm one of the co-founders at Acasta and I look after uh, our platform, our team and the business growth. So um, Acasta are an employee focused technology agency and we're on a mission to transform how people work. Um, we came up with that mission um, around October time last year um, and COVID-19 has certainly accelerated the way that uh, people are working over the last few months. So um, we work with customers like Virgin Media, Next and Tesco to support their workforce and um, building employee apps and tools that help boost knowledge, drive compliance and grow their culture. Um, we've been mostly based in Brighton since we launched in 2011 and we've got an in-house team of 18 people who create a mix of our own products and platform alongside some bespoke employee apps and tech as well. Brilliant. Um, so what has work been like during lockdown at Acasta? What sort of, how have you adapted to this new way of working? Um, so we started encouraging staff to work from home a couple of weeks before the government enforced lockdown uh, and then a week beforehand we properly enforced uh, everyone to work from home so it was kind of nice that we had the chance to make the choice to uh, work from home before the the big lockdown kicked in and um, so it was less of a surprise and something that we had started to prepare for um, but obviously in that moment we hadn't expected uh, lockdown to last so long i don't think anybody was everyone was saying oh it's just a couple of weeks it will blow over um, and here we are um, but we also didn't expect it to be the beginning of this big shift into the way that we work as a business. Um, but, but through lockdown, we've had a good sense of purpose, which has kept us all motivated. Um, obviously, we do a lot of technology that's used by employees in organizations, and we've seen um, our existing customers relying on us more than ever because um, they use our platform to communicate with their workforce and push out all of their policies and guidance. Um, we've been seeing kind of over six times the traffic that we would usually expect. And I think that gave us all a, a kind of understanding of what we're doing is is really meaningful and uh, and helping our customers and helping people uh, be communicated to from their workforce, which is uh, from their head office, which is really important. I think uncertainty is the biggest risk for, for humans. If you don't know what's going on, it's, it's bad. So um, knowing that we've been a small part of that has been really helpful. And we've also um, worked with the Brighton and Sussex Medical School, and we were able to release a case-based learning app that we built with them um, for free across all 25,000 medical students. And I know that's been a particularly rewarding um, piece for the team. Uh, not lots and lots of money, but a, a great, again, another piece of purpose that has meant that we kind of don't wake up in the morning thinking, oh, no, here we go again. It's another day of this. Um, and we've also launched a free app for um, scanning. So people that are working from home who um, might not have scanners and equipment, we, we launched that for free as well to help people. And uh, interestingly, a lot of law firms have started using that. And they're a, a funny industry because most of them have kind of have offices deeply ingrained in their DNA and the culture and the ways that they work. Um, to the point where we've heard stories of lawyers running out of an office with suitcases full of uh, paperwork as soon as lockdown hit um, and obviously weren't set up from home. So I think we, we've been fortunate and I'll talk a bit more about it um, later on, but we've we've kind of always had the ability to uh, to work from home um, and have the, our own technology as well as lots of other tools in place that have helped us with that. Um, but it's still been it's still been tough over the last few weeks um, and even in tech there's where there's lots of demand for better employee tools. We found customers, even those big supermarkets with booming profits have still said they're not spending any money until they completely understand the economic impact. So just touching upon what you were saying then around sort of always having had an element of this, have, have you sort of had distributed workforces before or was this a totally new way of working for you? 
Um, so yeah, we've had we've obviously had a few few things in place already. Um, I'm sure lots of you uh, have, have maybe been in a hurry to bring in things like Slack and uh, and Google Meets and Zoom and get that all set up. Um, we've always had a few remote people on the team, and over the last 12 months, our server team have been mostly um, remote, which has given us a good uh, group of people to learn from. Um, and it meant we already had to have ways of working where we can communicate when we're not all in the same space. And I mean, on top of that, even when we were in the same office, we would often message people when somebody's the other side of the room. Um, so we already had things in place from that um, perspective. Um, but we've also done flexi time for the past few years. Um, so effectively, we only need staff to work uh, four key hours every day and when they're available um, for things like meetings and catch ups and any questions that other teammates might have. Um, and then as long as they're completing their, their work and their hours for the week, we let them fit that around their lifestyle. Um, and I think flexible working becomes even more important and when you're working from home. And I know, Rebecca, you were talking this morning about how you're up at seven o'clock going through your inbox, uh, ready to start the day. Um, so it means people that want to get a head start can, or if it's a sunny day, you can go for a nice two hour long lunch, lunchtime walk. Um, I like to try and get to the gym before the evening crowd. Um, or, or often you might want to work late if that's when you find yourself the most creative. So um, we've always had that in place. And yeah, through, through lockdown, we've realized how, how valuable that is. Um, and, it, and obviously, when you're coming to an office every day, flexi time is a bit trickier because you can't kind of you might nip out to the shops if you're based in Brighton and go into Churchill Square for a bit of shopping. But it's often quite hard to to get that good balance when you're working from home, even if you want to go and put a load of washing on. You don't have to feel guilty and all of the stigmas of uh, remote working with flexi time kind of help fade away. Yeah, I think definitely that has been a, a plus for me because you say I'm a, I'm a real early bird. So being able to sort of get in and tackle the inbox before it fills up again has been a massive win for me so yeah I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that um so I guess what what was the sort of the key thing that made you make the decision to give up your office sort of could you talk a little bit about that thought process was it just a no-brainer or did you sort of go through a sort of a, a journey to get there yeah I, I would say on paper it's a no-brainer but obviously there's a lot of emotion that goes with an office and the prestige behind that um but there were kind of three key things that that led us to um close our office about uh, three weeks ago now although no one had actually been in there for for a fair while um so money's the obvious one and probably the first thing that people think of um and for some businesses closing your office might right now might mean the difference between surviving as a business or avoiding some redundancies um but I'm also aware we were quite fortunate. We were on a three month notice window. So we already had that flexibility. I know um, lots of businesses might be locked into kind of three, five year leases, which makes these things a bit more problematic. Um, but I do believe if not now, in a few years time, people will be looking at offices as a luxury item when you're going through your list of expenses and say, do we need an office where 20 people can come to and work every day? I think that's that's going to change across small companies and all the way up to the large corporates that we work with, we know they're already looking at that themselves as well. Um, but it's worth noting that closing an office doesn't mean that you instantly save all of that money. And um, there'll be kind of lots of costs of meeting up, whether that's and getting different equipment, uh, software, although it's not as expensive as an office, um, these things do start adding up. But the, the good thing is if they become variable costs instead of fixed. So if you've had a good few months, we can enjoy a nice get together somewhere fancy, or if times are tight, we can have happy meals on Brighton Beach. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and, there, and then obviously there's the money that we save as a business, but there's also the time and money that's saved by all of our staff. So, and we worked out as a team of 18 people, we were spending about 75 hours a week getting to and from the office. And um, so that's almost kind of two full-time jobs of, of effort and energy that we've uh, been able to bring back. And I know some team members were saving, uh, spending over 2000 pounds a year on rail travel. And um, so for them, that's 2000 pounds in their pocket that they didn't have before. Um, and then there's obviously the environmental impact on top of that um, from from not having everyone commuting in every day. Um, I mean, we, we were we've always been based in Brighton. We have a lot of people walking to the office, so unfortunately, I can't come out with those great stats of how much carbon we've saved the world. Um, but with people walking and cycling in, but obviously on a wider scale across the the whole country and the whole world, I think we'll see some mm -hmm. some strong improvements from there. Uh, and the next one of our next reasons of um, deciding was we've actually had the opportunity to test this. Um, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people here would never have thought to try out what we've been doing over the last few months. So if it wasn't for the pandemic, um, we wouldn't have had a chance to have, have tried this out. And I'm sure we would still be going into the office every day. Um, 
but we were kind of thinking if we can make this work in a world health crisis when everyone's stressed already lacking those social interactions then we're confident that we can make it work really well when things start to return to normal um, but I, I would say the most important piece um, was the team and um, so my colleague Jason who was on our server team he was already working remotely at the first week after um, lockdown started he sent a message to our company slack saying he's never felt so connected to us all since he uh, started working remotely um, and it made me realize that maybe a hybrid company uh, where some people are remote but most are in the office every day wasn't working that well and we needed to look at kind of leveling the playing field um, but bringing everybody up instead of dragging everybody down in the process uh, and, and on, i was just going to say on top of that uh we had some office goers who are um very devoted love going into the office every day and even they were starting to say do you know what i'm actually getting more done um i'm feeling things are productive i'm feeling more productive uh, everything's going well in including our project managers who i thought would be the ones panicking how the projects were being delivered and um, so we kind of felt like if things are going this well and we can make it work and so how did you engage them in the process how did you sort of get that feedback and sort of was there a was there a was there a I guess a format or or a sort of process to to get that information from your teams? Yeah, we we made a real point of it being a, a team decision. Obviously, it's a, a massive change, and we can't assume that it will work for everybody. Um, so we sent out a survey to get that feedback, um, and I find that surveys generally work much better than um, conversations, especially when you need to have eighteen of them. Um, and I find that people are more honest um, when you ask them for specific feedback over a survey. Because um, at the beginning of lockdown, I said I'd drop off screens, keyboards and mice for anybody that needed them. Um, and only a couple of people said, yes, that would be useful. And then as soon as I sent out a survey with a bit of a shopping list, I ended up on a 70 mile round trip, dropping off, <laughs> birds, off dropping off lots of stuff to the team. So um, I'll just run you through like some of the questions that we asked and the feedback that we got. That'd be really helpful. Perfect. Yeah, I think it'll be obviously we're, we're kind of a tech team. We've already had some things in place. So um, this one might not be reflective of your workforce, but a lot of these things are, um, I think will be useful for everyone to have an understanding of. So the first one we asked, which was simple, was do you see a caster working as a fully remote company? Um, and we had 95% of the team saying yes. Um, and then they, they had some benefits to that, which is um, obviously the ability to relocate and work from anywhere. Um, it sounds obvious, but being able to move out of expensive cities and afford maybe a nice home without having to worry about a two hour commute to and from the office every day. And then also the ability to hire a kind of wider and more diverse pool of staff um, as we open that up. And obviously it means staff don't just have to be based in the UK as part of it as well. And that becomes particularly interesting as you look at uh, overseas growth and having to support customers around the world. Um, if you've got good processes in place um, to be a remote company, that really helps um, with that growth. Uh, another obvious one is that better work-life balance. Um, the time wasted of commuting to work each day, which I've touched on. Um, but what's what's the interesting one is it's not just the time you spend getting to and from the office. It's that taxing nature of getting stuck in traffic if the bus is delayed or there's um, bad weather that just kind of means you start the day in that negative mindset. Um, and also it's good to, good to focus. There's fewer distractions than in the office. Um, there's definitely some challenge of um, tech of getting those interruptions from things like Slack, but it's much easier to close your Slack and email than it is to put a box around your desk um, in offices where most people now work in open plan. Um, and if you ask anybody kind of when do they like to be in an office, they'll often say, I like to get in early or stay late uh, to get some proper work done because that's when there are no distractions and I think not much work actually happens in that nine to five in an office. Um, there's lots of meaningful things that do happen in there and we can touch on those because we have some concerns from staff um, which we don't have all the answers to yet, but they felt like things that we knew would be manageable. So there's that social side and the power of conversations in the kitchen uh, and just feeling, um, yeah, feeling like you've got a, a team of people around you, uh, feeling more disconnected from colleagues as well, which is similar to that point. Um, and an interesting one that somebody raised was that those issues that like small issues might go unresolved because there's that big barrier to discussion. It might be a small issue that you'd happily talk to someone over when you're having a cup of coffee, but actually, um, if you think, oh, I need to phone them up or send them a message, it might feel like it's a bigger deal. And obviously these small issues can often escalate. So we wanna make sure that we've got some processes in place to, um, to facilitate that. Um, there's a few things we do from a tech perspective, which are from agile ways of working. So doing um, retrospectives, looking at what's going well and what isn't. Um, so maybe we need to look at bringing those into the day-to-day -day kind of operational side of the business as well. Um, 
and I'm personally, I'm fortunate to have a home office and a private space. So we wanted to be mindful when making this decision that it's it's fine for us, but maybe tough for other people. Um, so we're looking at offering things like co-working space for people that either need or want to get out of the house, whether that's because they need some peace and quiet or for their own well-being. Um, I think there's a big risk of being lonely if you live alone and work from home. Uh, I definitely did that earlier on in my career uh, and definitely felt my mental health take attacks off the back of that. And there's things like exercise as well. So just actually having a reason to get out of the house, even the walk to and from work uh, can be good for your health. Um, so that's another thing. I've been very big fan of the Apple Watch, making sure that <laughs> I'm uh, closing those rings every day and staying fit. So uh, what, what I found was most interesting though, across all of the points that we asked was, um, besides the worry of people's cats sitting on their keyboards and hindering their productivity, um, most people weren't concerned about getting the work done. It was just all of the bits around work um, that they were looking at. So. Um, we have got a little guide on our website with some questions on that we've um, shared that has 50 different questions you can think about asking your staff. So if you want to add me on LinkedIn or um, I'll get Rebecca to post the link once it's up on the White Sussex website and that can give you a few to pick and choose from if you want to do one of your own surveys. That's really helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I'd be delighted to share that. Um, so you were talking then about sort of like co-working and the, the equipment drop and, and things. So what what's sort of the logistic process been like so once all of your staff were on board how have you actually gone from that decision to making the leap to being fully remote it was the the logistics that nearly put us off the idea of clearing out our office that we've been in for nearly <laughs> 10 years in the same building moving up the floors and obviously having kind of tens of people in the process um uh, was yes very daunting and but we realized that uh, the fear of doing a bit of hard work for a few days to clear that all out so it wasn't a good reason to keep paying thousands of pounds a month in rent so um a few long days with some colleagues and we were able to get most of it out and into new homes um and we we do still have a small storeroom of of um, junk that we're sorting through um not quite as we speak but it's on the list um so obviously being a small company these things often fall on the uh directors or um management team to be looking at and <laughs> Sure, I'm sure bigger companies can look at getting a team of movers in, but for us, it, it kind of felt like we, we needed to sort it out and go in there and do it. So logistically, just a lot of clearing out. Um, there are a few other boring bits that came up. Um, the Having a phone number redirected, um, which, which sounds like a simple thing, but actually isn't as easy as you think when there's not 20 people that can now answer a phone, there's uh, either one person. So the way we got around that is um, we have a telephone answering service who pick up the phone on our behalf. They're, a lot more affordable than you might think um, and it means they answer the phone 24 7 as well so it's actually um, giving better service to our customers that might call out of hours or if we look at growing overseas as well and the best thing about it is they filter out lots of um, unnecessary calls as well which I'm sure you're all familiar with um, the post is another one we don't get anything that meaningful in the post um, other than the a few deliveries of chocolate and coffee to keep the office going um, which obviously uh, we don't have to do at the moment um, but lots of people expect an address when they go onto your website and obviously you need one for correspondence. Um, whether you use your accountants or your own home, there's that risk of potential customers going on Street View and seeing a house. And there is that stigma of that just making it not feel like a real business. Um, I'm sure that's going to change, but for, from my perspective, we're going to look at um, updating our website and our contact page to really reflect that we're remote and why that's good for us and our customers um, as well. So. Yeah, I was going to ask about that because you were saying before about sort of the branding and I know that, um, you know, there is the the Brighton brand of being a Brighton based business. Was there a concern? I mean, I'm from Stoke and I know a lot of sort of creative businesses that I used to work with in Stoke would also use a Manchester office because it was seen as more desirable to have an office in Manchester than it was in Stoke. So I just wonder whether you would consider whether it was a consideration to sort of lose that Brighton brand and if you've sort of incorporated that in any other way sort of. To, to keep that sort of connection with the city? Yeah, I, I, it's one I'm struggling with at the moment. Even in my intro earlier, uh, I've kind of struggled to know. I, I love coming that we come from Brighton and it's always been a, a thing that we're proud of. And obviously our customers like a, a day at the beach. Um, and it's often, I won't say it's been a powerful sales tool, but we definitely have customers that like coming to visit us uh, or will borrow a room in our office for the day so they can all have a team meeting. So uh, from that perspective, we're going to make sure that we kind of either rent meeting rooms at hotels or co-working spaces or even just nice meals and restaurants with customers when they come down and making sure we take them for a trip on the pier. Um, so from, from a customer perspective, that's our plan. Um, and I think for us, we, we want to make sure we keep the city close to us. Um, 
And at the moment we can cheat a little bit, which is that we're a remote company, but most people are still based in or near Brighton. Um, mm. so that will help us transition. Um, so I went for a walk with a colleague the other day for their one-on-one -on -one, and we had a walk and an ice cream and had a much more <laughs> relaxed conversation. It felt fun and it was also nice to kind of talk about non-work stuff. And I think that obviously becomes more relevant because we're not having those um, social chats in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at doing things like having coffee shop budgets so staff can go out and either get some peace and quiet and have a change of scenery or uh, meet up as, as smaller teams. Um, and I think for the, for the short term, most of our team meetups will be in Brighton um, as, our, as our base. Um, but still working exactly how we make that come across strong on our website as, as being a, a Brighton but remote company. Um, so stay tuned for that one. I think would be a, a big piece. Brilliant. It's really interesting what you're saying about those sort of walking meetings. And um, I'll go to some questions in a moment, but sort of feeding into the next question. Um, we, were, we, were, we were sort of talking with um, uh, the diversity working group about how at the moment things like walking meetings are a lot more um, inclusive. It sort of takes away the hierarchy of a meeting and actually walking and talking means that you're you're sort of talking with someone as opposed to at someone. So I think there's a lot of benefits around that sort of inclusivity. Um, and I, I just saw a question from Mo which says, um, do you have any plans to recruit soon? And any thoughts on the recruitment and onboarding for new employees? And as I said, we've, sort of, we've just done a series on that topic. So I'll make sure, Mo, that I include the links to those videos for you. But it'd be interesting if you have any thoughts on that, Ben. Um, I've certainly watched the videos because it is definitely an area that we're concerned about. Um, I mean, at the moment, we're kind of we're looking at just keeping the core team uh, and growing our revenue. So hiring isn't the top of our list of something that we want to have a plan for. But I do know that that's going to be a challenge. And even when we've hired people remotely um, and advertised a job as a remote role, somebody uh, that joined was actually based in Shoreham, so still quite close and working remote. So. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that is definitely a part that we don't have the answer to, but people, as Rebecca says, have, have done some great talks already on that. And I think that we'll be learning from from one another on the best ways of doing that. Um, the good news is there's lots of companies that have been remote for, for the last 10, 15 years. Um, they've put out lots of guidance on the best ways of doing that, making sure that it's uh, inclusive and making sure that um, not just the hiring, but yeah, the whole onboarding process is really strong um, mm. as well. And and and. That is probably our biggest worry and the one that we haven't got very far down is right now our culture is good because we've been crammed in a small office together for uh, the last few years. But how does somebody new joining uh, kind of understand that culture without us having to kind of formulaically give them loads of articles on what how we want them to, to feel, which is really hard to do. Mm. Thank you. Um, also, a question uh, from Vicky, which says, I really like the idea of flexi time. Do you think this works for all sectors, i.e. accountants, and the expectation from clients to be available between core traditional office hours of nine to five? Yeah, I think that that's uh, obviously we have have lots of customers and lots of support things coming in. And um, there's probably more we need to do to build in some stronger processes in there, because I'll often find myself on the Friday afternoon checking what kind of things have come in to make sure we're on top of things. Um, but I can't see why it couldn't work for any sector. And I think that also your customers might start working different hours. So I think also with some good planning, the ability to make sure that right now our flexibility time does give everyone that day to day flexibility. But I would imagine as we grow, if we were a team of 50 or 100, we might have to start making sure that people are on hand at the right times. But it also might mean that you can serve your customers better because when you get that email at 530 before somebody leaves their desk for the day, you might have somebody that's working late that can pick that up and actually deliver a better service. So and um, I, I definitely think it will work and even things like that telephone answering service is, is useful for us from that perspective because customers don't go oh they never um they never answer their phone. i think can uh, really help brilliant thank you i'm aware we've only got a couple of minutes left um and i always like to try and finish on time so um just a final uh, question for me was, what do you think your new sort of work life is going to look like now you don't have an office? What do you think, what do you think life looks yeah. like post, post office? It was quite interesting. As soon as we decided to uh, close the office, I found myself a bit grumpy for a few days and I couldn't quite realise why. Uh, and what it was was that kind of my lockdown life had now become my actual life because it wasn't just something we're doing temporary. So uh, that was a piece that as soon as I realized it, I was I, met, I started bringing in some some kind of positive change and making sure that 
I, I do have a bit more of a balance and not just working all the time. Um, so for, from that perspective, I think it's it's good to to realize that maybe working from home, whether you keep an office open or not, I think it's start it's like lockdown is going to be around for a fair while longer. I think it's worth that everyone takes the time to find some good 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 balance and whether that's yeah, making sure you're getting more exercise. I've been trying to read more in bed instead of scrolling through social media, which is just like a thousand people shouting at you before you go to sleep. Um, so things like that have been uh, really useful for me personally. Um, and I think it's about finding finding what those are for you. Brilliant, thank you. That's a really nice and positive note to finish on. So um, thank you very much to Ben for his time. Um, I, this, as I said, this has been recorded, so I'll make sure that we send a link out um, hopefully later on today um, to the video if anyone wants to watch it back. Um, and yeah, I'll make sure I get all of those links that I can include from Ben. Um, so I think that's it from me. A massive thank you to Ben for his time. A massive thank you to Vicky and Plus Accounting for sponsoring these breakfast sessions and making them possible. Um, and if you do have any thoughts of other topics that you'd like us to cover in these events, then just um, give me a shout. I'd love to hear any thoughts that you have or anything that you can share. Um, and that's it from me. I hope everyone has a really lovely day and look forward to seeing you again soon.